is the protein in my urine due to the protein that I eat or due to chronic kidney disease? In this video, I will answer that question. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Magda Casaneda and I'm a certified nephrology nurse and an integrative nutrition health coach. And I'm also the director of Utopia Health Career Center, where we specialize in training and education around kidney failure. So I am starting a series of videos where I am going to be answering questions that have been sent to me um, from people that have questions about kidney failure and their results and their kidneys. Um, and in a daily basis, I receive many, many emails. It's difficult for me to answer all of the emails one by one, but in an effort to try to go through all of these questions, I am going to create videos and I am going to post them so that anyone that is having the same um, question can uh, benefit from the answer. Now, one thing that I do want to make clear, and this is my disclaimer, I am not a doctor, so my counsel, counsel will not replace your doctor's counsel, okay? This is basically more, I'm focusing more on the person that has been told that have kidney failure, but still, you feel like your answers have your questions have not been answered you feel lost and you're you're trying to find some direction so that is what i'm here for trying to give you some direction um for you to basically um take decisions on what is it that you're supposed to do and um and what is your best course of action okay so i am going to start with a question that i have i'm not going to say the names just because of confidentiality but i am going to say the initials so this is so that the person that is listening hopefully they know i'm talking about them okay so d p this question comes from d p and this person he's a male and the person starts writing I am having a I am having a GFR of 72% now. So th this means that this person is telling me that he has chronic kidney disease. He already knows that he has chronic kidney disease because he has a GFR of 72% from 100%, okay? So that means based on this number that he is giving me um we identify this number with a chronic kidney disease stage two, okay, stage two. So the person has undergone a couple of different tests and also he gets an ultrasound of his kidneys twice a year. So that confirms that, that confirms to me that he is a person that's, that has chronic kidney disease, okay. Now, he says that he does heavy weight lifting and cardio at the gym for an hour and a half almost every day. And he drinks three liters of water and he takes his total protein intake in a day is around 75 to 100 milligrams. And it's higher because he, he does um, weight lifting. And then he says that Apparently, the urine that he is making, his urine collection in 24 hours is about three liters. So um, that's, that seems normal. And he says that his urine looks foamy occasionally. And maybe especially when I am taking eggs. So when he eats eggs, he noticed that his, that his urine looks foamy. And, um, and then his question, and the question is, is the protein content of urine due to my protein intake or to CKD? So in this case, the answer is for this particular person, because he already knows that he has chronic kidney disease and he's given me some results. The answer is that is very possible that the protein is due to chronic kidney disease, okay? 
because you already know that you have chronic kidney disease. So when you have urine in your, I'm sorry, protein in your urine due to chronic kidney disease, usually the problem is at the glomerula, glomerulus level. So inside of the kidney cell, which is the nephron, there are two parts to that cell. There is a glomerular, glomerulus, which is a, a sac, right? And um, um, eh, there are some tubes. Now that glomerulus has a wall and that wall is a semi-permeable uh, wall, okay? That wall will let fluid, water and small solutes small cells pass through and then bigger cells should not pass through so protein is a big cell protein should not pass through that wall so knowing that you have protein in your urine tells me that there is some issue there at that level at the glomerulus level so based on that, and because you already know that, because you already know that you have um, chronic kidney disease, what I would do, because most people ask me, should I control or limit my protein intake? And that is one of the suggestions, basically, when you have chronic kidney disease or when you have been diagnosed with chronic kidney disease, especially if you have a lot of protein in your urine, is to control your or to limit your um, protein amount. Now, this always has to go with the doctor because it also depends on your protein levels in blood, albumin levels in blood, and I don't have that information because he did not write, uh, he did not write this information. Um, but if you are running low, in protein in your blood and the doctor can tell you that then probably he will tell you to increase your protein intake now in this case and in the majority of the case the cases you are told to limit or control your protein intake because the kidneys are going to work harder when they're trying to clean up the protein or trying to clean up the waste that is created by the protein okay so that's why you are told that you got to take it easy with the protein now in your case your lifestyle is of a bodybuilder okay or a weightlifter so it comes to a point where maybe a decision has to has to be taken and that decision will be, I want to label or name that dis decision saving my kidneys, okay? So in this case, what I'm trying to say is that you, you're probably going to have to decide if you will continue to build, you know, bulk your body or save your kidneys, okay? And that is up to you and that is up to each one individually i cannot exactly tell you what to do but if it was me i would probably take care of my kidneys that would be my answer i would limit lower the amount of my protein intake and then maybe lower the amount of the 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 weight that i'm lifting just so that I don't need the amount of protein that you need to maintain those muscles, okay? So this is a very individual decision. So with that said, another thing that I wanted to talk about is that you should be working on any other risk factor, uh, be it, for example, if you are diabetic, I don't have that information, you may not be diabetic, but if there's a person here that is watching this video and it's diabetic and and you have this a similar problem if you are diabetic you need to make sure that you're keeping your blood sugar in range okay so you would benefit from dropping the um, the granular granular um, sugars dropping um, sugars um, and maybe trying to eat a better a better diet which is maybe lower in carbohydrates or you choose better healthier slower carbohydrates okay 
Um, so keep your keep your blood sugar in check. If you have a diagnosis of high blood pressure, which you don't have because you all right, at least you didn't write it, but if somebody else does, you need to make sure that your your blood pressure is in range because these things are going to stress the kid kidney even more. Okay, so um, blood sugar, blood pressure. If you smoke, you I don't think you're a smoker. You didn't write you're a smoker, but again, if somebody else is is listening to this or uh, watching it, and you're a smoker, I'm gonna recommend that you stop smoking. Okay, if you have any type of pain and you tend to take the over-the-counter non-steroidal um, anti-inflammatory drugs like the NSAIDs, and these will be the naproxen, ibuprofen. I would stop those. Those I would stop that. Okay, those medications are toxic to your kidney. So I would talk with my doctor and ask him to recommend something for pain that is not that type of drugs okay another thing is that i would be careful with the dye the dye that is added to x-rays some some x you know when when you're having some studies done like x-rays or um ct scans with contrast those type of things i would always be aware and i would always tell the person listen I have kidney failure and I know that the dyes or the contrast are are toxic to my kidneys. Can we do this test without the contrast, without the dyes? Maybe you can. Explain that to the doctor, to the specialist that you're seeing. Sometimes the doc, the specialist that you are that you see is not the nephrologist. So sometimes that information is not coming is not uh, going across so maybe the specialist and the other doctor does not know that you're having some issues with your kidneys okay so that's important um and another thing now i'm going to switch a little bit because i'm talking a lot about physical but we have to understand that we're not only we're not physical beings only okay so we have we are mind body and spirit okay so now on the other hand anything that is causing you any type of stress you need to work with that okay so if you have an emotional issue that is you know like is is giving you a lot of stress you got to work with that um if you are in an environment that is very stressful for you you have to work with that try to try to look into your options but you have to eliminate the stress um, because again the stress on your kidneys there is a gland and those are called the adrenal glands and those are the ones that are associated with the hormone that is the, the um, secreted when you are under stress right so you do not want to stress out your kidneys. You don't want, you do not want to stimulate that hormone more than you need to. Okay, so you really need to work with the, with the stress. Anything emotional that is very heavy, you got to work with that. So one of the things that is recommended in that area will be creativity. You have to engage in an activity that will let your creativity flow so it could be whatever makes you feel creative okay whatever it could be as simple as coloring books for adults um, it could be as simple as engaging in a class where you dance where you sing those type of things okay so it's you got to look at everything so you looked we looked at the physical part of it um, with the diet, you're going to help it with the diet. We looked and we looked at the men mental and spiritual part of it, which is trying to avoid um, a little bit of, of stress and working with the stress. How you're going to work with that? Meditation is something that helps with that. Um, talking with a counselor, um, yoga, those type of things will help you um liberate a little bit of that tension and so i'm i'm gonna try to cover all of the areas and you take what you like and you take what you believe in and the rest you can leave it there but 
truly and honestly what I've seen and where I've seen people heal is when everything is incorporated not just one thing is everything is incorporated so try to work with that um, go back you can go back and watch this um, video again and take notes and start to implement a couple of things that we um, discussed here and again if you have any questions just send them to me i'm going to be trying to answer i already have a lot of questions so it may take me uh, longer to get to your particular question so this is it for this video i hope you like liked it remember to subscribe or like our facebook page and um and share this video because there are many people that can benefit from it okay so see you soon